Hi, Mike Gaben here with some more KSP math. In the associated tutorial, I looked at how to perform powered landings on Kerbin's moons, and then how to ascend and get back to Kerbin. For the math, I'll take a look at how to calculate the cost of landing and ascents on worlds without an atmosphere, and how to calculate the cost of transferring between different spheres of influence. So, without any further delay, let's do the math. In the last Let's Do the Math, we looked at how to use the Delta V map to determine the Delta V budget for our mission. This time, we're going to look at how to calculate these values ourselves. Specifically, we'll calculate the Delta V required to get into low orbit from Mimis's surface and how to calculate the cost of the burn that returned us to Kerbin. We're going to do this using nothing but formulas we've already seen. Specifically, our two Hohmann transfer delta V formulas, even though we didn't perform one Hohmann transfer this entire episode, you're likely beginning to realize just how useful these formulas are. I've been calling them the Hohmann transfer formulas, but they're more commonly referred to as the vis viva equations. Vis viva is Latin for living force. Another formula we'll be using is the circular orbital velocity formula. There's one more formula, but it won't be coming up for a bit, so I'll save it for later. Here's the Kerbal X sitting on the surface of Minmus, which has a mean radius of 60 kilometers. Imagine we are looking at this from directly above Minmus's North Pole. We want to figure out the cost of getting into a 10 kilometer circular orbit. We got into orbit by performing a burn at the surface and then circularizing at apoapsis. I want to pause and consider this diagram for a moment because, as I'm sure you realize, this isn't really what I did. Specifically, burn 1 here is perfectly horizontal while my actual burn started off vertical and then quickly went over to a pitch of about 45 degrees. What I have here is a simplification to keep the math from getting truly horrific. In fact, I'm assuming that Mimis is a perfect sphere and that burn 1 is performed over such a short period of time that I get up to velocity almost instantaneously. That said, the approximation we'll get will be very good, but it's good to realize that it will be a bit low. We'll start our calculations assuming this is a straight up Hohmann transfer from a radius of 60,000 meters to a radius of 70,000 meters. I've used this formula a few times before so I'll assume that you can make these calculations yourself now. Remember that mu is the standard gravitational parameter for Minmus, and a is the semi-major axis, which is just the average of the two radii. Using the vis viva equations, gets the delta v1 of 6.5 meters per second and a delta v2 of 6.2 meters per second. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to realize that the sum of these two numbers is nowhere near the cost of getting off of Minmus. This is because the vis viva equations are for transferring from one circular orbit to another, and we aren't starting in an orbit here. We're starting on the surface of Minmus. We need to add on the velocity that is required to get an orbit at a radius of 60,000 meters. Putting these numbers into the orbital velocity formula, we get a required velocity of 171.6 meters per second. Now remember, we're not starting from a standstill. Mimis itself is rotating at a speed of 9.3 meters per second at the equator. You can look this number up on the KSP wiki. As we launch to the east, we are already moving at this velocity. To calculate the amount of the burn, we take the orbital velocity we need to get to, subtract the 9.3 meters per second we already have, and then add the first part of the Hohmann transfer to get 168.8 meters per second. Burn 2 is just the second part of the Hohmann transfer, and adding it all up, we get a total required delta V of 175 meters per second. Checking the delta V map, we see that they have 180 meters per second here. This is a result of them rounding up to the nearest 10. Theoretically, landing should cost exactly the same, but I've already mentioned that this value is based upon idealized conditions. I would budget at least an extra 10% for achieving orbit, and likely 25% more for landing. This very same calculation can be done for any world that doesn't have an atmosphere. Now let's look at the cost of getting back to Kerbin. This was done in a single burn, ejecting us from orbit around Minmus, and putting us on a return trajectory into Kerbin's atmosphere. We'll start by simplifying the situation by removing Minmus 
and imagining the Kerbal X in a simple circular orbit. Mimus' orbit has a radius of 47,000 kilometers, and the burn I set up in the video got me a periapsis of 25 kilometers. This is a straight up Hohmann transfer between two circular orbits. As the burn is at the higher altitude, we use the second vis viva equation. Substituting in, I want to draw attention to two things. One, I'm now using the gravitational parameter for Kerbin, and two, the higher orbit is the radius measured from Kerbin's center, while the lower altitude is measured from Kerbin's surface, so I have to add on Kerbin's 600 kilometer radius. Punching through a calculator to get 230 meters per second. Note that I don't have to worry about the burn down at periapsis. Kerbin's atmosphere took care of that. Let's bring Minmus back into the equation. The Kerbal X is starting in a 10 kilometer orbit. Before we can begin falling towards Kerbin, we have to first leave Minmus's sphere of influence, or SOI. Within this sphere, the game calculates the force of gravity on the ship using Minmus. Once outside this SOI, we fall under Kerbin's gravitational influence. We have to do more than just leave the SOI, though. We have to exit the SOI with a velocity of 230 meters per second in a retrograde direction relative to Kerbin. We need to calculate the velocity required at, the, at an altitude of 10 kilometers in order to have a velocity of 230 meters per second at a radius of 2,247 kilometers. When I first derived the Vis Viva equations back in episode 3, I spent a fair amount of time talking about conservation of mechanical energy. While exploring how energy is conserved in an orbit, I developed this equation. This formula relates the velocity and radii of any two locations in an orbit. The orbit doesn't need to be circular. It doesn't even need to be an ellipse. In this formula, V2 is 230 meters per second, R1 is 70 kilometers, and R2 is 2,247 kilometers. What we want is V1. To help out, I'll just rearrange for V1. I took the liberty of replacing the V1 with VE, as this will be our required ejection velocity. Substituting in and pushing through a calculator to get 319 meters per second. Of course, it's not like we're at a starting from a standstill. We use our orbital velocity formula one more time to get an orbital velocity of 159 meters per second. This means we need to add 160 meters per second to our current velocity. This will get us exiting Mimis's sphere of influence with the necessary 230 meters per second which will put our periapsis well into Kerbin's atmosphere. Looking back at the video, we can see that the actual burn was 161.5 meters per second. Not bad. By the way, this te technique will not only work for Mimis and the Moon, but can actually be used to calculate the necessary ejection burn to transfer between any two bodies. You now have the ability to calculate for yourself most of the numbers you see on those Delta V maps. And with that, I'll bring this episode to a close. I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.